I'm finally getting to do something that I've always wanted to do. This is the video I have always wanted to make, but didn't really have the ability to really do it or capture it properly, but now I do. Today, we are finally going to show the exact correlation of ambient temperature to your system's temperature. And if what I have been preaching the entire time is correct, we should see this temperature of the system go up linearly with the temperature of the ambient, the ambient temperature, that. So for instance, if I make it 10 degrees Celsius warmer in that room, we should see 10 C Celsius warmer at our max temperatures in, this, in the system. So let's hope this is one of those like, see I told you and not, well, shh, kind of moments. The XG2736 and the XG2536 gaming monitors from ViewSonic feature 240 hertz default refresh rates, one millisecond response time mode, and industry leading 0.5 millisecond moving picture response time modes that are ideal for gamers demanding a competitive edge. Designed with eSports in mind, these XG monitors feature fully adjustable and low profile footprint stand for optimal viewing distance that professional gamers demand. To learn more about the XG2736 1440p and XG2536 1080p competitive gaming panels from ViewSonic, Follow the link in the description below. I'll be honest, I don't even know why I'm putting it in a case. Oh yes, I do, because this is gonna be my test mule because, because one of the other things I've done is I got my um, decibel meter. It arrived, not using it today though. That's something else I'm gonna need to be able to, like I'm gonna play around with and, and get my testing methodology set up right because I don't have a hemi anioic chamber, however you pronounce it. I don't, I don't have a anechoic. anechoic, I don't have a, I don't have a pointy foam drive you crazy room. But what I do have is I do have this room here, which is actually pretty noise isolated. Um, and I do have a separate tripod and I do have foam and all that that I can set the PC on so that I can at least noise normalize as best as I can without it being quote unquote, you know, scientifically calibrated. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll be able to put them in the uh, temperature controlled room where I can then keep the temperatures consistent when we're doing case testing. So this is gonna be the first case that I'm really sort of testing. Uh, this is the Landcool 216. I sort of just grabbed it so I could put these parts in there. Um, so yeah, should be should be fun. But I gotta get the system in here. This, this is the hardware I'm using for our case tests. Case tests need to have the same hardware used every single time. Like even the, the mount for the, the cooler being unmount, dismounted and remounted can have a one to two C change in temperature. So I'm using KPX thermal paste on here. This is the Noctua UHD16, I think it's a D16 Slim or D6, D16S I think it is. Um, I also added a 120 Be Quiet fan to the front because it does just have a middle fan that's designed to pull air through and push. I added a 120 to the front, got the same drive. This is a Z790 UD series from Gigabyte. Uh, it's got a 13900K in there. I went with a CPU that can generate heat, 253 watts, should be enough heat. That's, that's, that's why I didn't go with an AMD system because I figured we need to truly like kind of generate some heat. And I'm using an RTX 3090, an EVGA 3090. That way it can live on doing things, right? It no longer just passes the butter. It's actually gonna be doing something. So as long as the hardware stays exactly the same in every single test, then that's, 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 that's how we get our AB comparisons. And that's the other thing too is like, I needed to pick hardware that is like relevant but not old enough to where it's gonna become irrelevant and I have to change it in the future. Because this is the thing, the second the hardware changes, every test before that is no void. And I don't wanna to have to go through it a million times and redo it all a hundred times. So anyway, let me get this stuff all in here and then uh, I'll get to use my Elmore's Lab or Elmore Labs, I think it's Elmore Labs, not Els Elmore's Labs, Elmore Labs. Um, the K-Type meter and his logging software. So that'll be fun. So this test that I'm doing today has nothing to do with the case. Like I said, I'm only putting this stuff in here because this is the, the case I'm gonna use to sort of figure out my methodology. But side panels open, top panels off. I want to remove the case as being any sort of a factor in our testing. So the only thing we want impacting performance, not necessarily performance, but the temperatures that are shown is the ambient temperature in the room. So for this test, I've set everything to full speed in the BIOS for the fans. This is not 40 dB normalized, this is much higher than that. But uh, because we wanted to exchange air with the environment as fast as possible, the, the temperatures will be the same. 
it'll just take longer if the fans are going slower. So we want to make sure that uh, we can make this exchange happen quickly. Okay, so I got the Elmore Lab KTH uh, right here, plugged, it, plugged into USB to the system. We have the coupler right here, right in the airflow of the fan that's pulling in ambient temperature. So that will be measuring our ambient temperature in the room. Um, here's the software right here. As you can see, it's currently at 22.4 C, 22.3. It's very, very sensitive, very accurate. The cool thing is we can actually have this integrate with hardware info. There is right there. Elmore Labs T, uh, TC1, we have one temperature, and now it's logging that temperature. So that is awesome because now I can just have one log file that will be rhythmically in sync with the temperature changes as we're talking about. So the load that we're gonna be using is for GPU also right now. Um, we're doing GPU tests. It doesn't matter if it's CPU or GPU. Um, the ambient correlation is gonna be the same for GPU or CPU, but the GPU is the hotter part. Um, I think it's gonna give me the more consistent load because what I can actually do is I can actually load uh, one of the GPU tests and I can leave it static. I can find a scene, lock it at that scene. So it's just rendering that one scene over and over and over. So the FPS stays consistent, temperature stays consistent, but we're gonna also have those fans set to 100%, power limit maxed out. I don't want any fluctuations in the GPU hitting any sort of headroom that's not temperature related, causing us to have what looks like temperature changes or fluctuations, but that could be power changes because of um, if it's going right to its power limit and it starts dipping, I don't want that to look like that's affected because of the temperature. Although the only sensor I truly care about in there is the hotspot and the edge temp temperatures because we're gonna compare those to what the KTH is saying the ambient temperature is. I wanna make sure that none of the cold air directly from the AC unit is blowing directly on this because that could affect it. So if you watch this, this is swinging up and down. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have it locked up. This is why we're doing this today. We're sort of testing to see what happens while also trying to prove something. Because obviously the air temp coming out of here is gonna be colder than the total temperature in here because we do have heat sources in here. We have the server, we have the data rack, we have the computer itself, we have our bodies, lights. So we need to make sure the cold air from this hitting that isn't giving us some skewed readings. So we are gonna use heaven for this test for one main reason. One, I have to log into the internet to use it. And then I can pause that test in one spot. So when we leave the room, we need to let it reach equilibrium. I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes to reach equilibrium. Then I will come in here and I will actually start raising the temperature um, by just raising the temp so it stops blowing cold. And then I'll probably even turn on the heater, start adding some, some heat, making it as if it were like summertime, right? Your windows are open or whatever. It's hot in your gaming room, you've been gaming. So we'll see, because this will not make enough heat to heat up this room very quickly. If it all went well, we're gonna come back with some charts and see whether or not it's a I told you so or a Jay's an idiot. Okay, so after a bunch of trial and error and then having the computer restart on me once, which we're not entirely sure why, we went back into the test room. We were like, why is it back at the desktop? Anyway, that's besides the point. Finally got some good runs, got several um, good runs. And then this is the one I'm using. We actually did about an hour long test here. So the orange line, as you can see in the bottom, that is ambient temperature. Let's, start, let's talk about the beginning part first where it looks like it's kind of a wave. It's going up and down a bunch. Uh, remember, we are dealing with an HVAC. This is a wall mounted mini split, industrial mini split. So when I have the temp set that low, um, what's happening is you're here, you're seeing it kind of like click on, click off, click on, click off, click on, click on, right? Cause it's got a set point and it's not gonna just run continuously. It can pull the temperature in that room down to the 61 degrees that we set it to. Um, and so that's why you see it bob up and down cause it comes up a couple degrees, triggers the compressor, turns on, cools it down. So that's why it's going up and down about, realistically it's like one and a half C is what you're seeing there. So the average temperature during that buoy bobbing up and down part of the temperature right there is 16.4 degrees uh, Celsius. GPU was chilling at about 56 degrees for that test. One thing I wanna point out is I did lock the screen. So what I mean is the test was not running the loop that has variations in it. It was the same frame being rendered this entire time. So you can tell when I actually clicked on um, the, well, actually I didn't click on the heater. I raised the temperature of the air conditioner. So that's why you can see it sort of like initially kind of jumps up and then it starts to taper up. What you're actually seeing right there is the amount of effect that the heat, that the components in that room uh, the, or the heat sources in that room are starting to warm up the room. Now, when you see it start to spike up kind of violently right there is actually when I clicked on the heater because I wanted to see what would happen if I add heat to the room that's not from the component. Uh, for, for in this instance would be the computer and the other the heat generating sources in there. So this would be like 
it's a cloudy day. Suddenly the sun comes out. You don't have insulation in your room or your, your house and it starts to warm up really fast. This is how the ambient temperature affects your components. Um, and then you can see it starts to dip down again. That's basically where I just set the temperature on the heater uh, to be less high. So I, I was no longer, so actually when it spiked really high, I set it to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where that spike is because that's as high as that heater will go. And then I set it back down to, oh, I don't know, uh, I think it was about 80 degrees. That's why it dips down a little bit. And the reason why it dips down, even though there's no air conditioner on, is because of the fact that the amount of heat that was being pumped in there was still not enough heat to cool off or warm up the entire room and maintain that temperature because the area outside of that room is colder than we made it in that room. So it's the reverse effect, right? So a lot of the heat that we were creating is actually leaving the room rather than going to the room. Because remember, heat travels to cold, not the other way around. Then you'll see the spike again, where I've got it as hot as we got in this entire test, which is where I let it get all the way up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, let it kind of get there. And then I turn the air conditioner back on, which is where it started coming down pretty violently and very quickly. Let's talk about the temperature differences though, because that was the whole point of this video. And yeah, it looks all crazy because I was testing how fast the room will sort of respond to temperature changes I tell it to do. So this video isn't just about, hey, when I say things move basically linearly one-to-one -one with ambient temperature, um, whether you're water-cooled, air-cooled, doesn't matter, I was also testing my environment to see how it responds to the temperature changes I ask it to create. So that's why this chart's all over the place. So if we take the 31 degree ambient and the 69 degree GPU temp and compare it to the earlier 16.4 degree ambient and 56 degree GPU temperatures, that is a difference of 1.6 C variance between those two points, with the coldest and the hottest. So what does that mean? It, move, it means it moves pretty much linear, exactly as I said. I said it's like within one C, it's just over that, but to be honest, our measurement materials are probably not quite as precise to get to that level, degree of, of granular accuracy. But I'll take this because this, this does show not only visually, but also with the numbers, that it is absolutely true that you can never get better cooling if your environment sucks. Now. The difference you, the temperature is above ambient is the only thing you have control of. So for instance, water cooling would get that GPU closer to ambient, but that, that, that chart would look the same on the same curve. It'd just be closer to the ambient temperature. But what you might find is that ambient temperature starts to actually, like I showed you, I had it set to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and it went to almost 88 degrees Fahrenheit just in that short amount of time because of the fact that the extra heat being put into the room by the computer and stuff will affect the ambient temperature. It's not just a heat pump putting heat into the room, it's also the electrical components putting heat into the room. So this was a fun test. It allowed me to really sort of use that room for what I intended it for, to, to have some temperature controlled areas, which is important for me. I am still need to play around with the thermostat so I can figure out, um, well, the nice thing is I'm using the same components every single time. I'm using the exact same components. The stuff in there is not changing. The only thing that could potentially change would be the outside environment. But fortunately, if it's hotter outside, I can still have my set point in there to where it needs to be. And it will still hold the temp where it is or where I set it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to start doing some, some case testing. I'm gonna start with the Landcool 216, even though it's an older case, just, just for me to get my testing and data points sort of set and get my, my standard, standard operating procedures or my SOP um, sort of figured out so I can have a checklist to go through and make sure we're doing it consistently every single time. But more importantly, I can finally say I was right. I'm not always right. In fact, I'm wrong quite a bit. But when I am right, you damn well better believe I expect some fanfare. <laughs> Phil, you better put some confetti and some yay on the screen or something or you're freaking fired. You're no longer freaking Phil, you're freaking fired. Probably shouldn't have said that on camera. <laughs>